Hi, hi everyone. Um, I'm Vic, and today we're talking about uh, satellite vulnerabilities, and we will have uh, several like case studies that um, vulnerability found by me. And before we start, I would like to introduce myself. And I'm Vic Huang. Uh, I'm an independent researcher uh, from Taiwan, and also a member of UCC Hacker, which is a technical community in Taiwan. So I've shared several uh, research on the conference, uh, hacking conference in APEC. So uh, I don't, I, I don't think I need to go through this. And today's, uh, this is today's online. So we will have a short introduction about the satellites and the segments, and then um, the two case studies about the uh, satellite service. So um, there are four segments in satellite service. So um, satellite ser uh, satellites itself and also a kind of spacecraft is the space segment. And um, ground segment is a ground station and related systems that can control spacecraft. And users uh, segment is all the devices like uh, satellite modem or satellite routers for users to assess satellite services. And for link segment is the data transmission uh, in radio frequency between the three uh, segments. So what could happen in this kind of uh, satellite service so we can start from the user segment. Uh, in user segment, it could be a malware attack. For example, the VI set uh, satellite modem is attacked by uh, Russian uh, malware, uh, AC RAN, in the Russia Ukraine war. And in the space segments, um, uh, Jay Wilbold, he shared his research in Black Hat. 2023 about the uh, vulnerabilities and the insecure design in the uh, three satellites. And in the ground segments, uh, there are a bunch of the APT groups that, that are targeting uh, aer aerospace and uh, satellite inter uh, industry. So, and also the last but not the least, um, between these three segments, um, there are a lot of uh, radio frequency attack, for example, uh, interfering, jamming, and replace, and also kind of uh, eavesdropping. dropping. That's if the user is using the unencrypt protocols in the satellite network, and you can intercept that kind of uh, traffic and try to analyze what inside. And I believe this kind of research is published in Black Hat 2020 by a um, well-known researcher. So today's we are not going to go through all the, the vulnerabilities in here. I will focus on what I found. Um, one case is about the space segments and one case is about the ground segment. So in case you are not familiar with the satellite systems, so in short, uh, systems on satellites is a centralized system so if you see the in the right hand side, um, it's uh, in the central. Uh, there is a command and the data handling systems on the onboard computer, which control the all other sub uh, subsystems on the satellites, and it's the core of the satellites. And also, you can see the right hand side, which is more mod uh, modern. Uh, version of the satellite is a CubeSat. It's a minimum sat satellite that only contains the necessary part. For example, payload. Um, the payload here is not the payload as we're talking about. It's a, a scientific devices for mission and also um, uh, onboard computer, the communication um, devices for uh, and also antenna, uh, sorry, and also um, electric power systems and solar panel for um, power supply and antennas for uh, communication to the ground uh, station. 
So as an independent researcher, it's uh, almost impossible to assess to this kind of satellites because I have, I'm not filed by a company or I'm not related to government or militaries. So for me, I can only, um, uh, do the, like, security audit or security research on the open satellite project. Because nowadays, the cost of the buildings, uh, and launching satellites is not so that kind of expensive. But still, I'm not affordable for buying a single onboard computer. I think it's uh, about like 4,000 euro for, uh, onboard computer without any other components. So it's still, um, too expensive for me. So I choose to, uh, do research on the protocols on this open satellite project, which is, um, created by communities or the labs, uh, the, the students in college. They have their own like satellite project and supported by their school or, uh, government. And most of their softwares and firmwares are open sourced. So, um, I try to do like satellite research on their form firmware, but actually, uh, their PCBs and their onboard computers are all like, uh, special design or designed by themselves. So you have to patch the firmware to run like virtually. So it's not easy for me to do that and it will cost a lot of time. So I just dig into the protocols. The in internal protocols of this kind of open satellite project. And here comes our first uh, case study. And uh, the space can uh, is uh, one of the libraries that develop in the Libre Cube, which is a cube set uh, open project. And this, um, the the author of this project have uh help to launch a satellite in in the past so i believe he's like very experienced developers on satellite si systems so that's why i i i picked this one and start to dig into the uh, uh protocols and this space protocols is based on ecss which is uh protocol standards of the space in europe and actually it's a CAN bus extension protocols for uh, satellite internal commu uh, communication. And if you are curious about CAN bus, I think most of you, uh, most of you heard about the car hacking. So CAN bus is also used in satellites uh, recently, uh, especially in, in Europe. So uh, it's because the, the stability of the Canvas, so it's widely you will be widely used in the cube set, which is uh, mid, uh, the the most small sets uh, satellites. And you can see in the picture in the right hand side, this is how uh, Canvas deployed in the satellite. There is an OBC, which is a controller of the satellite, and all other subsystems and components connect connect to this two bus and the components and the controller can uh, transmit the CAN frame in the CAN bus for, um, for function. And this is the CAN frame that used in a space CAN. In, the, in your left hand side, uh, 11 bits is for CAN ID which is actually the, pa the packet headers of the space can. And in, and in your right hand side, it's a uh, eight bytes for data. Uh, actually, it's uh, the data in the uh, space can packet. And this space can supports different commands. Um, you can see in your right hand side, it's about the broadcasting um, protocols and also the most important two uh, Comments that we we will mention is a tele command and telemetry. So the tele command is basically um, the command from the ground station, and uh, as it 
transmitted to the satellite, the satellite will start to do the in instruction inside the telecommand and send the response as a telemetry back to the ground station. And this is the can ID, which is a packet header. So the um, architecture of the can ID is there is uh, there are four higher uh, bits which represent function ID, and the uh, lower seven bits represent node ID, which is well, like which components on the CAN bus. So the combination of these two uh, 11 bits is um, if the mask is um, IDTM uh, hex 300, it means this uh, packet is a telemetry packet and it's sent by node ID1. So now we understand like what kind of pack uh, header in the space node. Oh, sorry, space can. And then uh, we're talking about the uh, node ID, which is a component in the can, uh, space can. So first of all, here comes the first vulnerabilities, because as we mentioned, there are seven bits it, to represent um, node. So basic, basically, it should be zero to um, one to seven. And then in here, the code, the coding here is actually, uh, the, the author didn't consider the negative, uh, scenario. So basically you can put, um, node ID equal to negative one. And actually it's pretty useless. So we can just ignore this. And, uh, for other scenario, um, there's no restriction or authorization mechanism on, uh, node ID. So basically, if you can, uh, uh, it's, ba it's fully trust, uh, from the, the senders. So basically, if you claim yourself, your component as a node something, and you will just, uh, totally accept. So in this scenario, you can see, um, the node ID should be unique. But actually, I can put the duplicate node ID in here, and it's allowed. And uh, it comes to to the duplicate ID. It means also means we can do the telemetry spoofing, which means we can pretend to be a, a legal node ID and then send the telemetry back to the controller to do spoofing. So we know about the headers and we know about there is a uh, spoofing risk. And now we are talking about, uh, when should we do this kind of spoofing? And in the whole process of the telecommandic telemetry, the controller send out the tel telecommand to the node and the node will respond the telemetry back to the controller. So in the whole process, no node which means a component is mostly passive in the whole cycle. So we have to find a way that the, a node or, or our malicious node can send out um, a malicious um, packets to pretend this um, telemetry is from a legal node. And here, uh, after I research in their functions, I found the housekeeping, which is a maintenance mode in the telecommand. Uh, once the um, ground station turn on the housekeeping, um, the node can start to send a packet ac actively to a controller from time to time. So this is our chance that uh, if we have already compromised one of the node, then we can start to send the packet back to the controller if the housekeeping is on. So we know about the headers and we know when should we uh, send, do the spoofing. And the next one is about the packet data. Uh, because there should be a lot of uh, different data in the housekeeping. For example, it 
could be um, temperature, it could be voltage, it could be a, any other static in the satellite. So uh, basically the data length is longer than eight bytes in a uh, basic CAN frame. So in the space CAN, they have a mechanism to do uh, packet splitting and cap, uh, packet assembling. So in this case, if you have data 1 to 14, which is longer than 8 bytes, so it will divide the whole data by 6. So you will reserve two uh, positions for a single frame. So in, uh, in your right-hand side, you can see that the whole 1 to 14 packet will divide to um, frame 1 to 3. And the first reserve position is for total frame. It means like uh, uh, 3 minus 1, we have a total 3 frame for this packet. And the second position is for index. So it should be uh, like 0, uh, 1, 2. And, and uh, it's for assembling. So uh, after we know how is splitting the packet data, we can move to the next part um, the, where the variability is, is the packet assembling. So in here, the logic of the packet assembling is first, it will check the total, the receiver will check the first, the total frame in the first reserved position and you will try to create a buffer for that, uh, for a node. Um, for example, if this frame is come from node ID1, you will create a buffer for node ID1. And if there's no buffer, you will create a buffer. But if there is a buffer, you will just add the packet in, into the buffer. And the third step of the assembling is if the packets uh, fulfill the length of total frame, which means if uh, the total frame is three and I receive three frame, it will start to assemble and it will start to sort by the second position, which is the frame index, and then clean the uh, buffer and return the data. And it seems um, nothing wrong here, but actually, uh, uh, the developer didn't consider that there is a um, scenario that it should, it, it could be a duplicate node ID because the buffer is only on and off. So if your buffer is on and a malicious node ID pretend to be another uh, node ID and send packet into the buffer, it will, the, uh, legal, legal packet and uh, malicious packet will mix together. So the result is like this. Uh, for example, um, let's say you can see your uh, left hand side. Let's say if there's no buffer at the first, at first, and there is um, node ID, no, normal node ID one and the malicious node ID one. So the red blocks, the red frame, are sent by malicious uh, node ID one, and uh, white uh, frame are sent by uh, uh, normal node ID one. So um, when the receive when the receiver receives this uh, sequence of the packets, it will get two malicious um, frame first, and when it receives the third uh, packets, you will meet the condition of the total frame because it's three, right? So it will start to uh, assemble the whole packet. And how is, um, so the result will be like this. You will start to assemble the whole packet and depends on the, uh, the frame index. So if you put any kind of index here, for example, you can put something out of the uh, normal index. So you put seven and 12 here, and the result will be one, two, three, four, five, and six of eight and six of nine. So uh, it is just because it doesn't check the index is in the range of the total frame. So you can use this technique to overwrite any part of the whole packets 
and you don't have to send out the whole packet. You just send out a fragment of the packet, and you can um, overwrite any part of the the real data now. So basically, you don't have to uh, you don't have to send out the full packets. So you can use this technique to manip manipulate the part of the real data. And here, uh, there should be a demo video, but because uh, we, we, I guess we don't have time. But for here, I just have a screenshot about the no, uh, normal and uh, overwrite it about the voltage value in the packets. So you can use this technique to uh, put the uh, disinformation on the real, based on the real data. And this kind of action will trigger the Controller, uh, with, uh, the onboard computer start to, for example, adjust the power distribution, or it will misleading the operation uh, operator in the ground station to start to um, try to do debug on that system. But actually, there's no bug on that system. It's just uh, disinformation. So this is the first uh, case study about the. A space in the space segment about the protocol. So um, next is about the ground station. And before we start to um, dig into the ground station systems, this is an open source library which is named libcsp, CSP, which is a CubeSat uh, space protocols, and uh, it developed in uh, 2008. Eight, and it's a C library, and it's totally like open source. So it's wide, actually it's widely used by uh, different company and some like uh, Hawaii space flights lab. And there, there are known uh, vulnerabilities in libcsp. Um, and also, um, I would like to mention this uh, library is also used by uh, European Space Agency. Sorry. And oh, I have mentioned about the research, research by uh, Jay Wilbold in the US, uh, Black Hat US 23 about uh, one part is about the deep CSP. He mentioned about the CRC and the HMAC, which is considered as a security option. Actually, you know that CRC is not a security option, right? It's just a checksum. So, this uh, CRC and HMAC in deep CSP doesn't protect header. You can check in uh, your left hand side. Um, actually, there are a lot of important fields in the header, for example, source, distance, and uh, port. So if you corrupt one of uh, any kind of field in the headers, you will not detect uh, because the CRC and HMAC in libcsp doesn't protect headers. And the uh, developer said uh, in the latest uh, version 2, this issue should be fixed. But actually, for I think for backward com uh, compatibilities, they just um, keep the, this issue. Um, so actually, the validation become you will check uh, validate with header first. So it's, if it's fail, you will start to validate the CRC and HMAC without headers. And I also found another issues in here. And because it's using CRC32, and it has a hard, uh, co sorry, hard coded um, CRC tables. And for, if you don't, uh, if you are not familiar with CRC, so basically it's just a uh, checksum with the same uh, initial value and same um, tables and uh, the same final like value, and you can calculate the same results. So basically, you don't have to care about the security option is protect pr protecting headers or data or something. You just um, click the GitHub and just copy the CRC from this deep CSP. And if you can intercept one packet uh, from deep, C uh, deep CSP, you can just use the, the same way in the GitHub to create, to calculate the checksum. 
And there's another like dangerous function in libcsp, which is uh, m uh, management protocols. So uh, libcsp provide functions for read and write and fetch system memory and remotely in uh, in the uh, management protocol. Uh, it's pretty dangerous and it's, it's necessary because it's the only way you can debug or to do a uh, firmware updates in that kind of systems. And also mostly they are using like uh, Linux in satellites, but most of the Linux in the satellite is not pro providing the uh, memory protection, like modern memory protection. So basically you can just put anything in the memory. And then here comes our um, case study. It's a system beta. Um, so last year when I went to uh, Echo Party in the South uh, America, I uh, I'm luckily have a connection with um, their, uh, one of the company. Uh, the company is a, uh, is a satellite system a supplier. So this is uh, from their uh, their pro product, and this is uh, used in the real world. And this systems is uh, kind of uh, QA system, and then they open QA system for me to do a uh, three days pen test on these systems. So this system has uh, three layers um, web service for human oh, okay for human interface. Uh, is written in Python, and also there's a middleware for OS check and the log. And in the last part, it's a CSP service that's uh, uh, transform the user's instruction to a CSP packet as sent to the satellite. But uh, in the environment, I uh, I was able to assess it's only a QA environment, so there's no satellite connected to these systems. And uh, in this slide, actually, I have signed a NDA with that company, so there there will be no like screenshot for this for for this case study. But they still allow me to uh, share the technical part of the. Uh, penetration testing process. So there are three different roles uh, for a web service, and I, I, I got the engineer's account first. And because in the end of system, there own, there's no satellite connect to the system, only a listener. And uh, it, it, uh, what it is used for is uh, it can display what kind of packet you will send eventually, and also you, it provides a monk, like some kind of monk uh, functions to send a little bit like response to uh, back to the web service. So basically, all the ch uh, almost all the charts and the functions are broken in this QA systems. So I've ha I had no choice. I have to start to do the um, security audits on the web side. So um, I start to check the AP uh, kind of like all what kind of. Um, Variable, uh, sorry, what kind of variables or what, what kind of function I can control. So I found a special like API key. Uh, they, they said this is used for automations. And this API key is um, super, uh, I would say super different from the modern API key. So usually API key is generated by the system and give to the user, but actually in here you can control, you can uh, insert any like special characters or special uh, or um, kind of characters in this API key. You can customize your API key, and also uh, I found the first vulnerabilities in here is the 20 characters length restric restriction is only on the front end. So actually. There's no long, uh, length restriction on this field. So I start to um, do fuzzing on this field. And uh, 
one of the payload is double brace seven, uh, multiple seven. If, if, uh, do anyone knows about this payload? Okay. So this is, um, kind of, uh, web hacking, like, uh, vulnerability, which is named SSTI, which is a server side template inject, uh, injections. So actually, uh, some of the service provide kind of template, uh, service for the developers that it can, um, customize their template and concat the user input in the template and the templates will execute in the server side and then return the uh, response back to the client side. And uh, about the SSTI, um, if you are interested in, in this kind of vulnerability, you can check the uh, 2000, in 2015 uh, by James Cattle in the Black Hat about SSTI. So uh, the easy test case in SSTI is like double brace seven uh, multiple seven, and to check if the response is 49. This means it's executed in the server side. And, uh, uh, and actually Jinja 2, which is a template, uh, systems, the Jinja 2 have a sandbox after this kind of vulnerability is popular in like, uh, CTF and also in the real world. They provide a sandbox in here. So basically, um, uh, there, in my experience, uh, you, you can find a lot of, like, Jinja 2 sandbox in, uh, which is implemented in the websites. So basically, you can try the first payload and you will return 49. But after that, uh, if you try to trace, uh, in, uh, the, the Python object to find the class to do code re execution, you will fail and you block by the systems. And that, that has go back to the, the, uh, response of that, uh, systems in fuzzing. So actually the response is embedded input double brace, which means it, it could not you, uh, it should not using the, the Jinja to, uh, sandbox because the response is different or it just customized its response. So the next thing I tried is try to bypass the um, double brace. I guess if it's, it's blacklist, I can bypass by other kind of payload. So in here, I use uh, brace and percentage and try to get a response uh, from the server side. And this is uh, brace and percentage is for uh, the code, uh, the code execution on the template, which means you can put like if else or other four for loop in the, by, uh, putting the breast and percentage. So in the first attempt, um, it, the return, the response is true. And in the second attempt, I try to find a, a vulnerable, um, not a vulnerable, but the, the class I can abuse in the Python, which has a built in import OS function. So this is, uh, I will skip the, the most of the steps. So this is a final payload in RC, in that web service, which is, um, find the correct, uh, class in the Python and to do import OS and open the reverse shell by the sockets and try to connect the all input output in that socket and then, uh, execute the beam bash. So I got, uh, shell from that web service. And then I try to start to dump, uh, dump the credentials from DB. And I found that I can even, I cannot, I, I couldn't even send a request, uh, uh, to, to pass the middleware because, uh, the middleware is not using the same credential as the web service. So they have their own back, uh, backup, uh, when the user creates a new account or uh, revise the API key, the, the result will sync to the media, uh, middleware as, as, uh, authorization when check when, uh, the web service send the request, uh, to the middleware. So, um, uh, so 
so far, um, what we got is only a web shell, and now and we know how to uh, we uh, send the request through the middleware, but we we still uh, cannot impact the uh, satellites. And so in here, I just uh, try to trace back to the knowledge I have. Uh, for example, if uh, CRC and HMAC uh, incomplete uh, protection is, is useless in here because we're not directly sending the packet to the satellites. And SSTI is only uh, RC on web services. So um, what we have is uh, what, what we have now is only the, probably the CSP management. If, uh, we can find the, this kind of firmware upload or, uh, debugging mode in, in that systems. So, uh, with the correct, uh, DB credentials and with admin, uh, accounts, and I, uh, I eventually find, uh, the, uh, firmware upload and and debug uh, functions in the admin. And uh, the last step is we have to pass the, the auth check in middleware for this kind of uh, pick and poke uh, over, uh, read and write the remote memory. So basically you can just put two uh, different admin for permission and then you can pass the, uh, the check, the validations. And in here, it means that we can do RCE or denial of service or pers persistent on satellites if there is, this system is connected to satellite because you can just uh, write anything inside the remote, uh, the memories in the satellites. Okay, so um, that is how um, I compromised the uh, ground station systems and and impact directly impact to the satellite, even though there is no satellite in that cases. Okay, so in the last part, we're t talking about tech, uh, tech wave. So, uh, in the first part, I just uh, briefly go through the basic knowledge about satellite and attack. And in the second part, you can see in the, that two cases, that's, uh, space open, uh, open source space protocols is usually lack of security design and they are using like lame, uh, encryption, maybe due to their power consumption in, or other reasons, but, uh, they usually have no internal OS radiation, just like something just like, uh, uh, industrial control systems and, also, the still the, the ground station system, which can directly control the satellite, is still the, the critical part of the satellite uh, whole satellite service. And also, if you are also interested in uh, satellite security, uh, you can try to do uh, research on that kind of open uh, open project. And this is the end of my slide. Uh, thanks for your listening.